Ice Odyssey! Hey folks, welcome to the Dice Odyssey. I'm Cos Man. You ever wanted to be a bean farmer? Well, today, your dream can come true in Bonanza. We're gonna plant some beans, harvest some crops, make a profit. Let's get it over to the table. When you open up the box is this beautiful artwork i mean look at this guy he's kind of fanatical it's almost like he's saying come join me my bottom dwelling brothers join me on this surface and we will rule the world for all being kind i don't know why i said it in that voice but anyway you get the idea the next thing is the cards now we're going to go through these but i'm also going to explain them as we go so the first thing I want you to notice is that number there in the artwork. It's in different places on each card, but very specifically that number. That number signifies how many of this type of card, for example, this dude who's high on caffeine, the coffee bean, there's 24 of this type of card in the actual deck, okay? Now, if you notice the coin counts down here, this shows you how much money you'll make when you harvest a certain number of this type of card. So for example, if you have four coffee beans in a bean field and you harvest it when it's only four cards, guess what? You're gonna get one coin out of that. That's what happens to these. They double as coins and you get to place that as part of your points in a pile. If you have seven, two, 10, three, and 12, four. And as you notice, each card, as the value goes up, meaning there's less of it, so it's gonna be more valuable, some of those change, so it requires less cards in some spots to get more money. For example, this guy is a cowboy. He's a little bit more valuable, and so on and so forth. The chili bean, he's a pyro. Oh, yeah. This is the funny one. We're all uh, we're making funny, funny, gassy jokes in the game. Yeah, we're all going to do that, right? This guy, well, I think you can tell he was, uh, he was out late out, out with his buddies. That's all we're going to say about that one. Mr. Peace and Love. Peace, peace, joy, joy, all that good stuff. The Rocky Bean. My wife calls this, I gotta go to the bathroom bean or UTI bean. And then our favorite, the Chocolato. And obviously because it's chocolate, it's gonna be the most valuable. Isn't that funny? Only four of him in the game. To begin your first turn, you're going to draw from the deck of cards your starting hand of five. Now watch very carefully. Each subsequent card that you draw must be placed behind the other one. That's one of the main mechanics in this game, okay? That you have to keep these cards in order. You can't just rifle through them and shuffle them and change the order in any way. That's actually what will mess the game up. Now, on your turn, you must play the very first card in your hand. That's a must play. Okay, I have two invisible bean fields out in front of me, which is like my play area, right? So I'm going to go ahead and plant this card. Now, I don't have to play the next card, but I may play it. So I'm going to go ahead and play it, right? Remember, that's one I don't have to play if I don't want to. After that, I don't play any more out of my hand. I now draw two out of the deck. Okay, I'm going to place these down for a moment. So now I've got a chili bean and a blue bean. This opens up the area now for trade with other players. You can negotiate. Say, for example, you might want some cards that will fill up your pile here. They'll actually fill up your fields and be able to allow you to harvest for money. Well, you can start talking to the other players at the table. Hey, I've got a blue bean and a chili bean. Does anybody need this? Does anybody have wax beans and green beans, which is what my actual uh, fields have in them? Hey, somebody decided to make a trade for, with me for the chili beans. They're willing to trade two green beans, okay? So remember, the chili I just traded away to this person, they have to plant that first before anything else on their turn. 
And in the same vein, whatever I receive this turn, I must plant right away. Okay. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and plant these now, these two green beans into my green bean field. But I still have this blue bean that nobody wanted or could take. Okay. Now I have the option to donate, but if nobody wants a donation, then I must plant this bean. I have to, there's no choice. Well, I've got a wax bean field here with one card in it, and I've got a green bean field here with three. I am stuck with a dilemma. I have to rip up one of these bean fields to go ahead and plant this blue bean. Well, the good thing is, if you notice on the green beans, I have three cards, which equals one coin. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and rip that up, and this now becomes one coin. The cards actually double as your points in the game, okay? Now, another scenario. Let's say, same scenario, I only had two green beans in there, okay? Here's where it gets a little dicey. As you notice, I don't have enough now to make a coin. I would still have to rip up the green bean field. No matter what, I lose the coins on this because, I mean, there wasn't enough to make one. I must now plant that blue bean in its place. Why did I have to rip up the green bean field? Because if you have a field with multiple beans in it next to one with only one bean in it, you must rip up the one with multiples, okay? Now, if there was only one in each, it didn't matter which one I could rip up. I could rip up either one and plant that blue bean I was left with, okay? That is a very important mechanic of the game. Again, it's something that is easily to, easy to forget, so just remember that. And now I take my one coin, and I plant my blue bean field, and now pick up my hand, and now I finish my turn because there was nothing else that I wanted to trade out of my hand, which I could have done at that time, and I pull three cards to end my turn. And that's it. Next player goes. One last thing to note. At any point in time, if you want to go ahead and purchase a third bean field, you can actually pay three of your coins that you've already earned in the game towards that third bean field. They just go into the discard pile. Now you put that next to your other two, and this way you're not stuck if you only have two and you need to plant a third. And remember, at any given time in the game, you can actually harvest any of your beans, even off your turn, so you can actually gain your coins. Person with the most coins at the win end wins. So what do I think of this game? Bonanza, for me, has quite a, a nice little history, actually. The first time I was introduced to this game was actually while my wife and I were living in New Zealand. We were living in uh, Christchurch, New Zealand, and we had a gentleman we met from Germany who actually had brought this over and started teaching a group of people that we knew there, some friends of ours. And we had one night where my wife was able to attend this group meeting and they all were playing this game because it goes up to seven players. And she fell in love with it. She came back to the States and she absolutely was like, I really would love to have this game. Well, I never actually got to play it while we were in New Zealand. I was actually getting back into board games at that time, and I was really heavily getting into Catan. I had a guy there that I knew uh, named Josh, and he was teaching me Catan. And I and I'd played it before for the first time, but uh, I didn't really have much interest in Catan at that time. But when he showed me Cities and Nights, which was an expansion to it, I was really getting heavily into it. So I never got around to playing this particular game. Well, we get back to the States, and I got this for my wife. I think it was for a Valentine's Day gift. Don't tell her. I probably forgot. It might have been a birthday gift. But anyway, uh, but uh, we got down to playing it, and we played it, and played it, and played it, and played it, and played it, until we played the snot out of it, if beans have snot. And uh, we, enjoyed the, we enjoyed it tremendously. And we started showing our friends. Well, I kind of have now, well, at least I did a few months ago. I love-hate relationship with this thing. I played it so much, I really just started getting tired of playing it, and we had so many other games we were starting to get into that this one fell by the wayside for a little while. Well, it wasn't but a few months ago now that before I made this video that some friends of mine had wanted to play this game. They saw it on my shelf and they said, hey, that's just sitting there. We played some of this other stuff you've got. Uh, why don't we try this one? I said, okay. And 
quite frankly, when we pulled it back out, I had forgotten how much I really enjoy this game. I, I enjoy the negotiation. I enjoy being able to drive hard bargains and make people pay more. Uh, let's just be honest, we rip each other off of the table all the time. I enjoy the interaction that we have between the players. I enjoy the hand management. Quite frankly, it was the very first time I'd ever had a card game where I have to sit here and be so careful about the order of which my cards are in uh, that I'm thinking about it the entire time. I'm engaged with it the entire time, trying to figure out what's going to come up soon, what am I going to plant next, uh, how can I maybe make a combo out of this, uh, how, what can I get rid of out of my hand during the trading phase so that these cards will come up quicker. And so I never played a game quite like that before, and it was a lot of fun. And again, I'm reminded of how much I really, truly enjoy it. And it's like it's rekindled a fire for me. You know, I want to go and actually cook beans over a fire and have fun with it. So, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I it, it was something that I'd lost for a while, and now I've uh, I've kind of refound, so to speak. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Anyway, uh, yeah, I enjoy it, and I, I recommend it highly. The only drawback, I would say, in particular that I found, was there was one night I think that really put a bad taste in my mouth for it. And this is my fault, this is no one else's, this is not really the game's fault. But typically when they say this thing can handle seven players on a box, I mean almost any game that says the high end of numbers of players, you usually don't always wanna to try to go that high. You usually wanna find that middle ground. For example, this goes two to seven players. I would say maybe there's a middle ground of three to five Six might be pushing it because once you get to seven players, especially if they're not necessarily experienced players, the game can drag on forever. But the one thing I can tell you that happened that put a bad taste in my mouth was I decided to put together a game of seven players, including myself, six brand new players. None of them had, never played, had ever played this game before, and some of them hadn't played many games before that. And so as you can imagine, that, uh, that didn't end very well. First off, there were so many people at the table trying to learn something for the first time, and I thought, wow, it's a gateway-style game. This will be easy to deal with. This will be easy to teach. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, did it drag on forever, and boy, did people lose interest. So I would say, and again, that's not necessarily a drawback on the game, so to speak, except maybe the high player count, making it a longer game than it needs to be. That was more on me, but at the same time, uh, I would say it is an amazingly good game, an amazingly fun uh, game for ga gamers that are, you know, the, the players being three to five. You know what I'm saying? Three to five players, that's a good sweet spot for it. So anyway, I enjoy it. My wife enjoys it. I, almost everybody I've ever played with has enjoyed it as long as I haven't tried to teach six newbies. So don't do that. But uh, yeah, that's going to be all for me. Thank you so much for watching the Dice Odyssey videos. I'm Kaz. And uh, please like and subscribe and, you know, leave a comment down there. And I'd love to, to interact with you guys. And I really appreciate all your support. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.